the show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Gloves Are Off. I'm Moses Wilden. we got a great show for you. Of course, we're going to keep it CPCA themed for a little bit, and for obvious reasons, with the finals happening here. Andrew Brethauer, uh, one of the voices for the CPCA as well, uh, getting in there in terms of one of the writers, also a sports editor for the Lloyd Mr. Source, and my co-host. Plenty of, I guess, job titles for you. Tons of hats. Jack Tons. of all trades. I should start wearing a hat. Everyone else does, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Well, the guy beside you has, uh, but there's a very good reason. One, King's Racing, because he's named King. He's in his first yeah. year as a driver, <laughs> former NHLer as well. Uh, and i got to ask you this, DJ, what's been harder? Your first time on the ice or your first time when you were hooked up on the wagon and ready to let those horses fly? Uh, probably the first time on the ice, like like an NHL game for sure. It was uh, just the, 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 like the more crowd and it's, it's, it's a, through a longer thing. The, the wagon thing is pretty exciting, but time you know it, it's already done, right? You, all that work and then it's all the prep. No one sees in the back of the barn and then all of a sudden you get around the track and drilling goes and it's over. During the hockey game, you come back to the bench and you can take it in and then you got to go again. So the, the first time on ice was probably a, a bit more, for sure. Yeah, but at least your first season. In your words, how'd it go for you, man? It's going really good so far. Just uh, this last show here in the finals here and just keep, keep running consistent. But we set a game plan at the start of the year and uh, we've, we've actually hit it and above it for this year. So I'm in, sitting in the teens right now, which, would, which is uh, really good for my rookie year and looking to win the rookie title of the year this year. Just me and Rocky Bremner were the two rookies and we had a good battle early in the year and then I kind of just kind of started climbing away just a little bit as the year went on. Well, you're definitely taking it to new levels. Congratulations to you. You're still not done, of course, with the shows happening in this final. And it's not just the race for yourself for the, for the rookie award, but you also got to look at who's going to be in that championship dash, who's going to win the SEGA Pro Tour standings. You got a lot of great names out there. Ray Mitzwing, of course, uh, swan song year. Uh, you look at Chris Smalley looking to um, at least take that experience he had in last year where he came up as this bright young driver, now trying to win a championship. Vern Nolan, a sly fox, a guy who just for some reason, he might lay in the weeds for a while, but just somehow pounces at the right time, has won the last consecutive or three consecutive titles, uh, if you look at what he's done. Uh, and then, of course, B.J. Carey, another name that's out there, a guy who's trying to redeem himself after uh, two years ago and three years ago when he had uh, penalties kind of curtail his opportunities. Are there any favorites to you guys uh, in terms of who you like to see in the final or has a good chance of, of winning the show at all? Well, no, no favorites for myself. Uh, just hoping uh, they all have a clean, clean, like you said, it's kind of saddening when you, it's all decided by penalties and all that. I mean, like you said, Ray and Chris are running really hard today, but or this year so far, but uh, there's a lot of people knocking on the door and you never know on Sunday who's in that dash. It could, could, like you said, it could just go anyway. I'll actually not go political answer. I'll give answers. <laughs> I'm going to doom two guys and saying Ray and Chris are obviously the favorites and they've been the most consistent yeah, of so. everybody. And like just how well Molly's running right now is, you know, breaking track records left, right and center. Plus he's winning two back-to-back -back shows, mid-swing as well. Like he probably took it a little easier in Turtleford and that's why he didn't win. But another guy after, after Calgary, three straight championships so it's I think it's going to come down to those two because they've just been the most consistent and that's what you need to be especially going to this final show to get one of those one two barrels they're gonna be the guys I for sure would pick does it make I want to ask you guys this maybe um, I, DJ you know this a lot more than say us um, we could kind of always speculate but I'll throw this question to you you have only one day a short turnaround from your your, your last race to the the finals that are coming up here on Wednesday is there a, a bit of a disadvantage in, in, in the sense that because you're not resting your horses Ray may uh, have the opportunity and that's why he didn't get the points he did because that's what he wanted to do from yeah. the beginning but you look at the layover is that going to be an issue or perhaps a factor this week uh, I don't think so not at all I mean everyone had a game plan and it, it was we only did run those two days until over it's not like we they added an extra day and that took away from our rest the horses had plenty of rest they had the two race days and I think a lot of guys, they, they were prepping themselves for this weekend, so what they use in, in that show, like Chris might have used his good good hook, but just to try to fine tune him for keep keep things rolling on a high coming into the uh, Lloyd Finals, and Ray took the other way, and he, he was resting some big horses, so he is saving them for this way, and not saying either way is wrong or right, but just just they each take a game plan, and they're setting themselves for up for Sunday. 
for sure. And it's going to be an exciting time to see what happens with yourself included. I want to move on to our next topic. And of course, we're going to talk about the Toronto Blue Jays. And it's all over Canada. Uh, I think it's very hard to find any Jays apparel, period. Uh, never mind in a place like Lloyd Minster, Toronto, they're selling out. Uh, major markets are selling out. Jerseys with Donaldson, Price, you name it, Batista. The lineup just, Tulowitzki, the lineup is just absolutely stacked. This is a team two weeks ago that was virtually about seven games back of the New York Yankees, now only a game and a half back, and have won about seven, eight games in a row. Is this team a, I, I, I guess, the most impressive that you've seen, or maybe there's certain elements of this team that you find the most impressive, I should say. They're just, right now in baseball, yeah, they're the most impressive team. Just, they've kind of put it all together. Like, remember two weeks ago, we were talking about what do the Blue Jays need? And they're like, oh, we need pitching. Yeah. We need someone to pitch. Well, now they got pitching, and now you got six batters in the front of the lineup who can hit the ball. They're hitting home runs left, right, and two. Like, this team is such a powerhouse now. That's like, and if you get your, we, I remember we, we were talking about the mediocre pitchers. Now they're playing great baseball. You have Dickey throwing great, Bueller's throwing great. Everybody doing everything they need to do, and that's what's impressive about the Toronto Blue Jays. It's not that they're just they're winning; it's how they're winning with all those ways that people said they couldn't win earlier in the season. And who they're beating? Like they just they come off in New York. Like it wasn't like that was like they they they're rolling high right now. And like any sports right now, when you're rolling high, things go your way. And and when your confidence is good, you, things just that you you believe in yourself and you. You play so you, your product on the field or on the ice or where it is is so much better when your mindset's there. And they went into New York rolling high, and then they're just I think they're just gonna keep steamrolling, and they're gonna be the talk for hopefully a long time. All right, we'll see where this team goes, but they're providing a lot of hype the first time in decades uh, for this country. Uh, let's move on uh, to uh, another case, uh, more so the NHL. Uh, the National Hockey League Players Association has decided to file a grievance on behalf of Mike Richards. Uh, Mike Richards obviously let go because of, I guess, a stipulation between uh, the GM and Richards himself. Things didn't work out, so they just bought out his contract. And the NHLPA says, you know, not so fast. You guys kind of missed a few steps. Does the NHLPA have a case for Mike Richards in terms of how the Kings dealt with this player? I think they, they do. I mean, they, they I think the the LA Kings might have pounced on it a little too early. Just they, they just when things I'm not sure that we're all just going through what we hear in the media kind of stuff. But it, by the sounds of it, they, they they took things right away and before they got facts and everything right and all that kind of stuff just to make sure they are covered. They might have pounced a little early. I think the NHLPA like they have for the last little while. They sat, they looked at the whole thing and they decided to back them up. So I don't think it's just going to be an easy case. So I think there's going to be. It'll be take a while, take a while to figure things out for sure. I think it just doesn't make sense because we don't really know what the whole Mike yeah. Richards story is, but you know what the Slava Volinov story is, and he didn't get let go. His contract's not terminated, and you know we're going through domestic violence with him, and he just got suspended. So how do you not suspend and terminate his contract, but you're terminating Richards, who really no one knows what's going on. That to me is... And, and also another guy in the mix that we'll talk about in a second. Yeah, but it, that's, that to me is the, the bigger problem. Like, it just spells like they're trying to circumvent the cap, trying to get rid of this bad contract, and trying any means possible to do so with a player that's obviously declined, has gone down in his ability to score and be that elite player who signed that massive deal. Because you, you're comparing on the same team too, and that's the problem. Domestic violence to the unknown of Mike Richards, and you didn't do it to one other player. So... That, to me, that's a clear-cut case for the NHLPA to say, yeah, what's going on here? Like, you, you did it to one, but you won't do it to the other. All right, guys, we're going to uh, take a commercial break. When we return, we're going to move on and talk about Jarrett Stoll. He's found a new home and hopefully a breath of fresh air in a different environment. We'll tell you more coming up.